二零一九年第一条，物理屏障同埋化学屏障咧，都系人体嘅第一道防线。两个 column 咧，咁我哋做翻个配对啦。咁啊，究竟边一啲咧系物理嘅屏障啦，边一啲系化学屏障啦？两者咧要分得清啦。咁啊，题目都好直接噶啦。物理屏障咧，皮肤啦，同埋血型块啦，你个皮肤有破损啦，有伤口啦，咁由于有血型块嘅关系咧，咁好多红血球啊、血小板啊喺度积聚咗嘅话咧，一来啦就能够防止一个过量嘅失血啦，二来啦亦都能够防止到咧啲病原体嘅入侵嘅。所以嗱，佢都係一個物理嘅屏障，而化學嘅屏障咧，分別就係淚水啦，同埋胃液啦。咁點解佢哋可以作為化學屏障呢？你見得到啦，佢一係咧就有啲酶嘅成分啦，例如口水啦，或者淚水啦，入面有酶啦，又或者啦，胃液入面有強酸啦，或者陰道分泌物咧都有啲弱酸咧，就抑制翻啲病原體嘅成長嘅。咁所以有陣時啲字眼啦，幾時係抑制個成長，幾時真係殺死咗嗰只病原體咧，大家要留意啦。咁 A、B、D、E 咧都有着落啦，咁 C 系咩嚟嘅呢？抗体啦，其实就係我哋嘅特异性防御机制啦。咁所以呢條題目呢，除咗考返我哋對於物理屏障、化學屏障嘅分別啦，原來啦都考緊我哋非特異性防禦機制同埋特異性防禦機制嘅。然後啦，去到 Part B 啦，呢幅圖呢就顯示咗吞噬作用嘅過程。Q 呢就係、是、吞噬細胞 p h y c o c y t e 而 P 呢就係、是、由淋巴細胞所產生嘅一個蛋白質。其實佢只係隱藏咗呢個字俾你啫，就係、是、抗體啦。佢當然啦，可以加多一條嘅問你㗎嘛。哦 ，P 係咩嚟㗎？抗體囉，一分搞掂咗㗎啦已經。所以啦，題目就只係問緊抗體喺吞噬作用當中究竟有啲咩嘅功能啦。所以題目係考緊我哋抗體同埋吞噬細胞嘅功能性關係啦。既然題目係問緊功能性關係，咁我哋各自做啲乜嘢，我哋都要知啩。抗体啦，基本三个功能啦，间接地拆解咗病原体嘅細胞壁啦，将病原体做一个迎集 a c c u t i n a t i o n 方便到吞噬細胞做吞噬作用啦，帮助吞噬細胞去中和毒素，因为抗体呢都系将啲毒素黐埋咗嘅，吞噬作用啦，唔使审啦，就係、是、去吞噬同埋消化咗啲病原体啦，系咪？嗱，各自各嘅功能就讲咗啦。但係點樣合作呢？咁今次啦，我哋要喺抗體嘅三個功能當中，要揀一個啱用嘅，就係、是、第二個啦，就係、是、將病原體迎集起上嚟，做個 a c c u t i n a t i o n 方便吞噬細胞進行吞噬作用嘅。咁所以答案亦都非常之直接啦。抗體就會黐住咗病原體嘅抗原啦。首先第一步咯。然後啦，就會將幾隻嘅病原體黐埋一齊，做一個 a c c u t i n a t i o n 即使答案冇寫到 a c c u t i n a t i o n 呢個字，嗰啲咩誒將佢 bind together 啊，或者佢 crumb 啊，其實都係呢個意思嚟嘅。如果你能夠寫到 a c c u t i n a t i o n of pathogens 就更加準確啦。從而啦，兩者嘅功能性關係咯，就係、是、幫助得到吞噬作用啦。咁啊，講完呢條啦，非常之直接嘅題目呢，又嚟到一點出發咯。呢、这個題目呢，就問身體防衞嘅，考嘅呢，就係兩樣嘢啦，非特異性防禦機制同埋特異性防禦機制。Part A 呢，主要就係講返物理屏障、化學屏障就係、是、非特異性防衞機制啦。題目考嘅就係呢兩樣嘢啦，點樣做個分別呢？第二啦，就係、是、吞噬細胞啦，因為佢見係病原體，佢就食㗎啦嘛。講起吞噬細胞、吞噬作用啦，佢嘅基本功能你要知道啦。吞噬細胞點樣進行吞噬作用呢？嗰啲基本嘅步驟，你又記唔記得呢？温咗書未呢？你又要睇返呢兩段片温一温書咯。而吞噬細胞有啲咩嘅適應性特徵呢？咁其實呢題目都可以問你嘅，又或者啦，題目可以問下你吞噬細胞嘅重要性啦，同埋吞噬細胞嘅適應性特徵啦。咁過往啦都有另一啲呢非特異性防禦機制嘅，就係、是、問炎性反應啦。而特異性防禦機制啦，當然係問抗體啦。咁抗體有咩功能啊？有咩適應性特徵啊？其實啦，都係呼應返呢之前拍嘅兩段片教返大家啦，做概念嘅整合啦。記唔記得之前教過大家 F F 溫書大法啦？有兩個 F 㗎嘛，第一個 F 就係 feature 特徵，第二個 F 就係 function 功能啦。咁跟住啦，將抗體同埋吞噬細胞結合一齊嚟問，就係、是、功能性關係啦。咁其實呢啲題型嘅變奏呢，呢兩條題目呢，你喺留言區你都試下答下啦，答唔答得出吞噬細胞嘅重要性呢？嗱，記住，喎，我哋之前我個直線抽擊答題法㗎喎，我唔係問你功能，喎。
外文你重要性喎。My question one is about body defense. Physical and chemical barrier are the first line of defense in the human body. And then we need to do the matching between column one and column two. Part A, it needs us to distinguish physical from chemical barrier. So you can see from this table, very straightforward question. Physical barrier, they are the skin and the blood clot. The blood clot, although it is not shown in the table, you know that if there is a wound on our skin and then we are breathing and then there will be blood clotting, all the rubber cells, the blood platelets, they are trapped in the wound and then prevent excessive blood loss. Meanwhile, it can also prevent the entry of the pathogen into our body. And for the chemical barrier, we have tear and gastric juice. So you can see that either they have the enzyme to kill the pathogens or they have the chemicals, especially the acid, hydrochloric acid or the weak acid in the vagina secretion to inhibit the growth of the pathogens or kill the pathogens. It depends on how strong is the acid. If the exit they are strong enough, they can kill the pathogens. And if the exit is not that strong, it will just inhibit the growth of the pathogens. Apart from those non-specific body defense, we have the specific defense mechanism provided by the antibodies. So that's why in part A, it also asks us to distinguish non-specific body defense mechanism from the specific defense mechanism. And for part B, we focus on the specific defense mechanism because we are talking about the antibody. So this diagram, it shows the process of phycocytosis. Q is the phycocyte, while P is the protein molecule produced by type of lymphocyte. And actually, molecule P, it is the antibody produced by the B lymphocyte, that's the plasma cells, right? Therefore, the question is asking, describe the function of the antibody in phycocytosis. Therefore, part B, the concept checking is about the functional relationship between antibody and phycocyte. Before we answer the question, we need to realize the particular function of antibody and phycocyte. For the antibodies, there are three main functions. Antibodies cause lysis of pathogen indirectly. Antibodies facilitate phycocytosis by agglutination of the pathogens. Antibodies facilitate phycocytosis by neutralizing the toxin. So you can see that in this diagram, the antibody really interact with the antigen of the pathogens. And then for the phycocytes, the basic function is to engulf and digest the pathogens by phycocytosis. And if we need to put them together, we need to focus on this function, the agglutination of the pathogens. Then the whole idea will facilitate the phycocytosis. Therefore, we need to say that the molecule P or the antibodies, which will attach to the antigens of the surface of the pathogens. You need to recall the idea of antigen first because the reason the diagram, it gives you this hints antigen. So you need to talk about the antibody antigen interaction. And then the antibody will bind several pathogens together as a big mass, or you recall these terms, agglutination of the pathogens and then it will enhance or facilitate the phycocytosis by Q, which is the phycocyte. So let's talk about the curriculum mapping. This question is talking about the body defense and it includes non-specific defense mechanism and specific defense mechanism. This question for the non-specific defense mechanism, we talk about the barriers, including physical and chemical barrier and the phycocyte. They perform the phycocytosis, that's the basic function. And then you also need to recall the steps of phycocytosis. Meanwhile, you also need to recall the adaptive features of the phycocyte because there may be possible question variation. State the importance of the phycocyte and state the adaptive features of the phycocyte. For example, the phycocyte, they can change their shape. And for the non-specific defense mechanism, we have such question about the inflammatory response. We also need to recall the adaptive features of the importance of the phycocyte because they can change their shape. Therefore, they can squeeze out of the capillaries to fight against the pathogens. Meanwhile, the question also asks about 
about the specific defense mechanism, about the antibodies, what about the functions and the adaptive features. How can we use the network thinking method to study the particular structure or cells in the body? So that's what I say that the FF study method. The first F is the feature. And the second F is the function. So you need to recall the adaptive features. How can it help the particular structure to perform their functions well? And then we put the phycocyte and antibodies together for the functional relationship. Therefore, you need to recall the strict to the point answering examination skills to answer the importance of the phycocytes or the importance of the antibodies in phycocytosis. If you just recall that all the phycocytes, they can carry out phycocytosis to engulf and digest or kill the pathogens. It's just about the function. What is the importance of the phycocytes? For these two questions, you can try and leave your answer in the comment section.